Well, hello everybody, this is John Michael Talbot. All things are possible with God. If you ever feel de depressed, discouraged, a little down, you gotta grab hold of that. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Come back and join us. Well, hello everybody, John Michael with you again. All things are possible with God and nothing is impossible with God. Did you know we hear a lot of bad news? We watch the news, boy, I'll tell you, it's coming at us right and left. Bad news about politics, about the economy. We even hear about bad news in the church, but nothing is impossible with God. People are ready to get excited about their faith in Christ again. People are ready to get going in the church, but we're facing challenges. Only 17% of Catholics in America come to church. Only 15% of Catholic youth in America actually come to church. There are 30 million non-practicing Catholics in the United States. If it were a denomination, it'd be the second largest denomination in the country. Wow, 30 million. And 50% of the people sitting in the mega churches down the street, you know, they're non-practicing Catholics too. What are we missing? Well, we're missing what the Pope has asked us for, and that's engaged spirituality. Not entertainment, but engagement. Engaged singing, engaged preaching, engaged praying, engaged, engaged participation in the liturgy and the sacraments. I'm going back and forth across the United States, going to big churches, little churches, rich parishes, poor parishes, people out in the rural areas, people in the inner city, people in the suburbs. I go all over. And what I find is folks are ready to get excited about their faith in Jesus. Again, all things, all things are possible with God. Say that with me. All things are possible with God. Never get discouraged. It's the devil's greatest trick. So let's take a look at these words. You know, if you look into the Greek, and I know you're not Greek scholars or anything, but say these words with me. The word for possible is denatus. You could say it donatus, but let's say for our sake, denatus. Say it with me, denatus. That means possible. And it's related to another word in scripture that is dunamis, or we will say dynamis. Say it with me, dynamis. What's that sound like? It sounds like dynamite, folks, dynamite. See, when we have the possibility and the power of God in our life, it's like an explosion of grace an explosion of power. Do you ever feel a little clogged up? <laughs> you ever feel a little spiritually or emotionally backed up? Yeah, I do too. And so we want to tap in to the dynamite, to the dynamis of God, the power of God, and know that all things are possible, even in the midst of a world where things look a little bleak at times. So that's what we're going to be exploring in this particular series. The word is used really in several scriptures. If you look to Matthew 19, verse 26, Jesus says, he looked at the apostles after he had called them to give up everything and follow him. They said, well, Lord, we can't do that. That's impossible. It's too much. And Jesus says, look at this, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Wow. If we tap into God, if we have a relationship with God through Jesus, the things that seem impossible, they're going to be doable. And what are these things? In Matthew 19, 26, he was calling them to a spirituality, to a lifestyle, to a lifestyle, 
that just seemed so high, so holy, so virtuous. They looked at themselves, you know, they were just fishermen. They were just simple fishermen. <laughs> and they said, how do you expect us to go out and change the world? I can't even get a full day's pay from catching fish. And Jesus is assuring them, yeah, you can't do this. God can. What are the areas in our life where God is calling us to something so wonderful, so beautiful, so holy, so true? And we go, oh God, I could never do that. Look at me. Look at my life. Look at my family. Look at my business. Look at my local church. Look at my nation. Look at, my Look at our world. That can't happen here. But folks, it can. It can happen in our life, in our culture, in our church, in our world. All things are possible with God. The other thing is, uh, you know, guy was being healed. He says, I don't have the faith for this. Again, Jesus says in Mark 9, 23, he says again, let me find this for you. It's a wonderful quote. He says, he says, if you can, please heal me. He says, if I can, <laughs> I love that. If I can, as if to say, of course I can. He says, if I can, all things are possible, not only with God, but to him who believes. So the question is, do we believe? Well, we're like the guy, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. That comes through the power of the Spirit. And we hear a similar word in Luke 1.37 because the angel Gabriel has given this amazing announcement to Mary that she is going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, that she is going to conceive and give birth to a son who will be the savior of the whole world and there will be no human father at all. That's impossible. It's medically beyond what we can understand. I don't think Mary understood it. <laughs> I know she didn't understand it. But Mary believed it. And because she believed it, Jesus was born into our world to be our Savior and hers. Wow. Nothing is impossible with God. Let's take a moment and let's listen to a song that is her Magnificat. Her soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Wow. I love my soul magnifies the Lord. Well, God is huge. How can, how can you magnify he who is already magnified in himself? It's a paradox. Our soul can magnify the Lord. Our soul can proclaim the greatness of the Lord if we dare not to understand but to believe. So take a moment. Holy is his name. That's what Mary said. If we're devoted to her, she will say, not me, him. Holy is his name. All things are possible with God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord And my spirit exalts in God my Savior For He has looked with mercy on my lowliness And my name will be forever exalted. For the mighty God has done great things for me. 
and his mercy will reach from age to age and holy holy Now this is the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we hold her to be the most important saint of all saints, because she dared to believe that which the world would say is impossible. I don't think she understood it. We still don't understand it medically. But she believed it, and because she dared to believe that which the world would say is impossible, Jesus was born into her life, and through her, he was born into our lives as well. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to overshadow us so that Jesus can be born in our life and we can give birth to him in the midst of this troubled world. Sing with me. Holy is his name. Sing holy. Some more. Here we go. Sing holy, holy, holy is his name. Well, hello, everybody. We're back. You know, holy is his name. Holy is his name. This possibility, this power of God comes into our life through prayer and through practice. And it is holy and we are to be reverent. But you know what? We also need some excitement. <laughs> we need the power of the Spirit in our life, too. As I travel across the country to churches, you know, I find repeatedly, Catholics can't sing. So I'm trying to wake us up. We need to start singing. And you know, Catholic preachers, they don't always preach real good. And sometimes we listeners out there in the congregation, we don't give them much attention either, do we? <laughs> so we got to start, you know, participating, engaging, Nothing is impossible with God. All things can be done. The Catholic Church in the United States needs revival, and our country is really at a pivot point. We are at a Nineveh moment. We can either change, repent, and prosper, and live, or we can keep going down the road we're going, and we'll end up kind of like Western Europe. Big churches, very few people in those churches. Huh? Old culture not always really thriving. So we got to do some repenting. We got to do some changing. Nothing is impossible with God and all things are possible with God. Now I want to get some kind of some specific things. We just did holy is his name. I do want to tell you that just because it's holy and reverent doesn't mean it can't be fun. A lot of times when I show up in parishes, first thing I tell them is, guess what, folks? Moses did not come to your parish. Nor kids did Gandalf show up. And for you TV watchers, the guys from Duck Dynasty just ain't here. <laughs> We're going to have Monk Dynasty in your parish today. <laughs> so, And there are wonderful lessons from our Christian history, from our tradition, that really do, in fact, teach us how to become radical disciples of Jesus Christ again. Well, this word possibility and power are used in various places in Scripture. You know, one of the first places is the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Listen what Jesus says. He says in Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is before they were supposed to go out and minister. He says, But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Now think about that. These guys were disciples of Jesus first, and then he called them to leadership. Wow. They were with him for three and a half years. They heard him preach. They heard him teach. They saw him work miracles. They saw him heal. They even saw him raise people from the dead. They saw him be true to his own teachings, not only in his words, but in his way of life, even to the point of giving his own life on the cross. And then the unbelievable happened. <laughs> he rose from the dead. Now you would think that these guys would have had all the inspiration they needed to go out and change the world. <laughs> no, Jesus says, you don't have it yet. You don't have enough yet. You need the power power, the dynamis of the Holy Spirit in your life. So he had them wait, and they waited until Pentecost. And we know from Acts 1, verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and the last part. That's just local. And to the ends of the earth. Wow. We can change the world, folks. Don't, don't give in to the discouragement and the despair and the depression. Are any of you struggling with depression today? I bet some of you are. No, it can change. Oh, there are medical things that have to be done and counseling, you bet. But none of that works without the power of the Spirit in our life. See, Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And that's why she is a symbol of you and me, of the church, of the believers. She's a model. The early church fathers called her a mother. So. We are overshadowed as she is over, and we give birth to Jesus. Wow, that the Master, Jesus, can walk in our midst again. Well, we don't have to necessarily go to the History Channel <laughs> and try to come up with some novel idea all the time. No, no, Jesus is right here in our midst. If we are open to that power of the Spirit. But you know, it doesn't just end with being excited. A lot of, I'm a Catholic charismatic. I've been involved in the charismatic renewal since I became a Catholic in 1978. And I was involved with the Jesus movement, which was Pentecostal and charismatic since 1971. So I've been at it a while. And I'm aware that sometimes, you know, we think we're anointed, <laughs> but we're only excited. <laughs> You can get excited about a football game. Doesn't mean you're anointed by the Spirit. No, when you're anointed by the Spirit of God, you have love and joy and peace and patience. Of course, I want it right now. <laughs> and kindness and mildness and generosity and chastity, self-control and faith. Wow. So when we are anointed by the Spirit, it's not just about getting excited. It's about being enthusiastic. The word comes from the Greek, in theos, in God. Say that with me. In God, in theos. When we are in Him through the Spirit, we do have enthusiasm, but we're not only excited. It changes our way of life. And that's why this word power is also used in relation to the cross. See, if you're anointed by the Spirit, if you have the power of God, you also learn the paradox of God. What's the paradox? An apparent contradiction that speaks a deeper truth. What are these paradoxes? They're found in all the great mystical traditions of all the great religions in the world, even in Greek philosophy. 
What are they? Well, that you find light, sometimes in darkness. That sometimes you proclaim the loudest when you're silent. Sometimes you find the greatest communion, community, when you're in solitude. Sometimes you, you experience the greatest glory when you're humble. And lastly, you experience life when you die to the old self. And Jesus shows us this. St. Paul says, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The power of God. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And then he says, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. If we are really in the power of God, we are letting go of the old self. We are being born again every day, every moment. And the old self-obsessions, the self-preoccupations are being let go of. We're letting, we're letting them die with Christ. And we're rising up a new person that is not ego attached, that is not grasping. And because we're not trying to be anything, now we can be the person God created us to be. That's my prayer for you today. That is my prayer. Let's allow the power of God to come into our midst. Believe with me, all things are possible. Die to the old self. Rise up today and be born again, a new creation in Christ. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy to be with you. Come back next time. God bless you. Only in God is my soul at rest. In Him comes my salvation He only is my rock my strength and my salvation my stronghold my Savior afraid at all, my stronghold, my Savior, I shall not be moved. safety when the enemy pursues me only in God is found glory when I am found meek and found lowly my stronghold, my Savior, I shall not be afraid at all. My stronghold, my Savior. soul at 
rest in him comes my salvation.